so in the last video we were learning about generics so that we could start creating our generic singleton pattern so before we do so we need to understand what a singleton pattern is a singleton pattern is something that makes it easier for us to access a specific script from other classes or other scripts and it makes sure that there are only one instance of that specific object for example we have one level manager here and because we have one level manager in our game we can make it into a singleton so that only one of them exists and if we make it into a singleton it will be way easier for us to access this level manager script from other places for example if we go to our tile script here and inside our tile script we can take some of the functionality from the level manager because right now in the level manager um what was it we had we had some functionality here where we are adding the tile to the tiles uh, function here or the tiles uh, dictionary i mean and this functionality here on line 115 my script in the level manager we would like to take that functionality and move it into the tile script itself for the, so every single tile adds itself to the tiles dictionary so if we take this one cut it and move it to tile script and one more thing i wrote um <laughs> i was just uh, someone noticed me or uh, noticed me yeah someone told me that i made a mistake here and of course i did in the setup of the tile script um yeah, set as a function of the tile script i wrote this that grid position equals grid position so it's setting itself to itself that's not the case it should be grid position up here so you can take this grid position and replace with um grid position with non capital g here because this is the one that needs to be set to this so now it's correct um, I didn't notice when I was writing it. I wrote it very fast. I made a notation notation in the in the video to correct it. But if you haven't seen it, then now it's is the time for you to change grid position over here to this grid position. So it looks like this. Anyway, this line of code here called tiles that add new point and so on. We would like to use that, um, or we'd like to add that from our tile script instead. So we can actually replace this x comma y with grid position like so and then we need to add a new tile and that's this so on because we are inside the tile right now but now comes the thing where we would need to use our singleton because the tiles here are not accessible from our tile script because they are inside the level manager right um where are they here as you can see they're inside the level manager so somehow we would need to be able to access this from the tile script. Okay, so we can do this the hard way now. Let's just do it the hard way just to show you how we can do it without a singleton. And then when we're done with that, we can actually change the code to use the singleton. So we can say um, tile script, uh, tile, sorry, level manager, uh, lm is equal to uh, game object dot find object of type um, game level manager and then we can say lm.tiles.add and then take this code up down here and put it up here so first of all we are creating our own level, uh, reference to the level manager here we are saying game object that find object of type to find the specific object of that type called the level manager and then we're using that reference and find uh, use the tiles and then add the grid position and so on. So now the code works, but this is going to be very tiring to write this line of code every single time we need to access the level manager from another script. So we can actually write a uh, singleton design pattern so that we can access the level manager functionality, the public functionality in the level manager from other scripts in a very easy way. So we need to create a new script first of all, called singleton. So go to the scripts folder, right click, click create, select this script and write singleton. So this singleton is going to be a parent um, class for every single class that is going to be turned into a singleton. And that means all our classes that um, are going to um, be singletons are going to inherit from this class. And let's just remove this. So this class needs to be a superclass, which means that it is never going to exist on its own in our game. 
So we can actually make it into an abstract class. And we use abstract classes when something is a general term or a, um, a super um, class to something else. For example, if we look at an analogy like a zoo, for example, we might have some different animals like uh, tigers, lions, uh, giraffes, uh, zebras, and so on, right? So these are all specializations of the type animal because both a tiger and a lion and a zebra is a, an animal. So the animal is super class and the zebra and lion and tiger are specializations. So the super class, because of the super class is an animal, we would never have an animal exist on its own in our game because we don't know how many legs an animal has. We don't know how many, um, what colors it has, what it eats and so on. So it would never make sense to create an instance of an animal in the game or for that matter, add an animal script to an object in the game because it wouldn't be a complete thing. Only our zebra and our lion and our tiger are complete things. So what I'm trying to say here is that we can make something abstract. So we can say public abstract class here. So now this is an abstract class, which means that I can't go here. If I find my singleton here, you can see that it says that it's abstract. So I can't take the singleton script by mistake and add it to anything in my game because then Unity is going to tell me that, well, this script class can't be abstract because I'm trying to add it to something. So now I've already made sure that I'm not going to add it by mistake, okay? Okay, so another thing we will need to do is to make a static instance of this singleton so that we can access it from other classes because we need to go through the instance of the singleton to access the functionality inside the singleton. If I would make this instance, let's say make public um, singleton, let's just call it singleton instance here. So now we have a public singleton instance. But the problem is that I'm not going to be able to access this instance here without having a reference to the actual singleton uh, class anywhere. As you can see here, if I go to my, um, where was it, was it in, in our tile script here, and I want to access the instance here on the actual singleton, I'm not going to be able to access it because I can write um, singleton dot, and I'm not going to find that instance anywhere, right? I would need to make a reference like singleton s equals game object dot find object of type and so on, right? Um, dot find object of type and then write singleton and then we are exactly back at the same square again. Then we can say s dot and then uh, instance here and access the instance, right? So now we're back at the exact same code as we were before we used singleton. So this is where we are going to use something called static, the static keyword. When something is static, it is accessible on the class level, which means that we can access it from the class name. And as you can see here, if I would go to the singleton and say public um, static, singleton instance and save this, well, then I'm suddenly going to be able to go to my child script and write singleton dot instance, as you can see. So now I can find it right away without going through my find object of type and all that and get an actual object before I can access the script. You need to be very careful when you make something static, it only exists in on the class level, which means that if you have more classes that shares the same static value, then the value is the same on all the classes. So let's say if if we went in, um, if we went in and said that our singleton, let's say it was an enemy, right? Public static integer called health. If they all had health, and we went to our level manager and we put oh, cancel, sorry, and we put this script here on 10 different enemies. If we change, if we go anywhere in our game and say um, singleton dot uh, health equals zero, then all 10 enemies will have zero health. So be very careful when you're using static for uh, more classes of the same type, because if you're going to have 10 enemies in the game and their health is static because it's easier for you to access it that way, well, then remember that all the enemies are going to share the same amount of health. So if one enemy takes damage, then all of them takes damage. So that's just, uh, just a note. That's not going to be a problem for us because we're not going to do something like that. Okay, so we have public static singleton instance. Well, that's 
very well, but we need to make this one uh, generic so that we can use it for different kinds of singletons. We need to use it for our level manager, our game manager, our menu manager, and so on. So if you remember from before, we need to use the T to indicate that this singleton is a, um, a generic type, and then we can replace singleton with T here. Okay, so now we have our instance, and we can go to our um, tile script and write um, um, singleton dot whatever. Right, but we need to be able to access the functionality inside the singleton. And to do so, we need to make a public um, static T called instance with capital, with capital I. And we need to make this one up here private. Okay. So this is the structure of the singleton. It's very, very important that you call this one with non-capital I and this one with capital I. Because right here underneath, we are going to make this into a, a property. And in here, we're going to check if our instance with non-capital I is null. There we go. So when I say singleton dot instance, it will execute this code and check if my instance up here has been set. If it haven't been set, well, then we're going to set it down here. And the mistake that lots of people do, I have seen when, when people are writing me that they get stack overflow exceptions or their unity crashes, it's because they have written it like this. They access this instance here. So that means your code jumps in on this line of code on line, uh, what is it, line eight here. And then it goes in here. And then it checks, well, is my instance null? Well, then it jumps because you're using instance with capital I, it jumps up here and calls itself again, jumps down here and goes in here and calls itself again. And then it's an infinite loop and it keeps calling itself forever until your application runs out of memory and crashes. So to avoid that, please make sure that you use instance with non capital I here, because then when you call this one, it jumps in here and checks if this one is null and then proceeds. So. If our instance is null, we say instance equal to find object of type uh, t. So we are going to find the object of type t. So right now, there's still a mistake. I, I'm going to fix that in a second. Don't worry. When we have done that, if we check our instance is not found, well, then we find the instance. And after that, we return instance so that we can actually get the object of the singleton and use it. So you'll see how it works in a, in a minute. As you can see, it complains about it can't use that find object of type and everything. And it's simply because we haven't defined um, that this needs to be a mono behavior. So you can simply just say where t mono behavior. There we go after here. So we just explained to it that t is a mono behavior no matter what. And because of that, we are able to use find object of type t here because this is a mono behavior uh, uh, call here. Okay, so this is actually the singleton structure. So what it's going to do is that our level manager here is going to inherit from our singleton and it's going to be a level manager type. Not single singleton, sorry. There we go, and level manager. So what just happened? Our level manager now inherits from this singleton class, which means that our level manager basically have all this code in it right now. It has all this code right here. So T will now be replaced with level manager here because we use level manager inside the brackets. So every time I go through my level manager instance, it says private static level manager instance and public static level manager instance and it's going to return itself here. So I can actually go to my tile script now, delete the code down here. So I can say level manager dot instance dot tiles dot add now, and then use this code. There we go. So now I just changed that game object that find code to this. So every time I need to access something inside my level manager from another class, I can say level manager dot instance the tiles, oh, the instance, and then access anything that is public. Do you have anything else that is public? Um, nope. If I made a new function here, public void do something. 
yeah, that was very well spelled with an F and a dash and everything. Here we go. Then I would be able to go to my tile script, for example, and say level manager that instance dot do something as you can see. So now I can execute functionality from that other class here. So that's the point of it. Um, so that was how you could actually create a single ton for our level manager. And we are going to reuse this out throughout the tutorial, of course. Um, yeah, that's actually it for this video. I hope you understand what a singleton is and how we can use it. Um, it might be a little confusing because it's generic, but um, I hope you'll get the hang of it as we go along. So thank you very much for watching this video and remember to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already. Also remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page, so all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. You can support me on Patreon, uh, by going there and support me by five dollars you will be able to download every single project that i've created for my youtube channel and all the assets that belong to all the projects you can also support me by getting one of my projects as a standalone product instead so thank you very much for watching